friends, this is Tara with Wellness with Tara. I hope you all are doing well today. I have someone here with me today to make this a little more fun because you guys hear from me all the time about all kinds of different um, topics from stress to habits, etc. And today I thought it would be fun to hear from someone else who has a little more, well, a little different knowledge in this area than I have that I thought would be really helpful for you guys. So the terrible twos can be a stressful time for parents and toddlers. And I know some of you ladies out there have a two-year-old or somewhere in that mix, right? My friend Adrienne here, she does online videos and classes to help toddlers learn to talk and communicate instead of screaming and crying and kicking and melting down. So Adrienne's classes help toddlers get out of that kind of terrible two stage a little bit faster, a little sooner, so that they can be respectful kids who can connect with their family and their friends. Now, she also teaches American Sign Language for beginners. She has an online course called Sign Language in 30 Days. Adrienne is a certified licensed licensed, excuse me, speech language pathologist. Funny that I'm talking about speech as I stumble over my words here. Um, her website has tons of videos, tons of videos, lots of free material, lots of paid material, good stuff in there. Um, helpful resources for parents and you can find her at learnwithadrian.com. I'll mention that again at the end, but I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an introduction to Adrian. So Hi, Adrian. <laughs> hey, Tara. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you are very welcome. Well, today I was thinking that it would be good to have you talk with us a little bit about stress and toddlers or young children, because this month we're spending time talking about stress in general for moms and, and you know, oftentimes having these small children who can't quite communicate just yet as well as we think they should be able to or want them to or yearn for them to. And I thought you might be able to help us a little bit about um, a little bit with that. So the floor is yours. I would love to hear from you guys. I'm sure we would too. The ladies here would too. Absolutely. So one thing about toddlers and anyone in general is when we're learning something new, like talking, we can understand quicker than we can express. So for toddlers, that means they understand what's going on. They feel these different emotions, but they can't express exactly what's on their mind yet. And so that's where we come in and we help. And um, we can, as parents, we can support them by giving them the words to use in situations where they feel these emotions, like they're starting to want to be more independent. They want to do, I do, I do, let me do it. Like, And so we want to give them the words that they can use to express when their emotions change because sometimes that causes stress and for toddlers to butt heads with their parents because sometimes personalities are so much alike that they clash or they're so different that it's hard to relate. So um, something that I have done when I first started as a speech language pathologist, I worked in the school for the blind here in Kentucky and I had a social skills group for elementary students, middle school students, and then high school students. So what we did across the board for all of those ages was I had um, some social skills time where we talked about emotions and I would bring in, um, since it was a school for the blind, I wanted to have something that was tactile that they could connect their emotions to. So I had this little um, cylinder thing. It was kind of like a noisemaker shaker with rice in it, but on one end I put Velcro so it was scratchy and on the other end I put um, the soft side of the Velcro. So that was kind of the good and the bad emotions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we called it uh, soft and fluffy and itchy and scratchy. So that's how we started out introducing the emotions to the kids because they, they understand what it feels to, you know, when they have the soft blanket, they don't want the scratchy one. <laughs> so it's something that's really tactile that they can relate to. So we started there. And then um, what we would do is at the beginning of each social skills group, we would go around the circle and we'd each share something that was soft and fluffy from our week mm -hmm. and then something that was itchy and scratchy from our week. And so we started with that concrete example. And then as the weeks went on, once they got that concept, kind of the highs and lows of their week, then I moved on to expand their language to have more vocabulary that would encompass those feelings that they were feeling. So itchy and scratchy might, might mean that they felt sad because they, um, couldn't go out and play in the snow when they had to be in math class or something like that. So, um, and then they, with the happy stuff, we could talk about that they felt proud or cheerful or um, excited or ecstatic. And so introducing those words to them really helps them figure out how to express what they were feeling because um, emotions are complex and they're, 
you know, we might feel happy one second and then disappointed the next second because something that we hoped for didn't happen. And so um, instead of feeling just turning inwardly and not being able to express themselves, I really wanted my students to be able to verbalize what they were feeling so that they could relate to other people or tell their teacher what was wrong or tell me what was wrong or relate to their friends and peers. So that's something that I really liked doing. I wanted to show you something that I used. This is um, called emotion and feeling wheel. If you just Google um, emotions wheel, this will come up and I printed it out and it has this core emotion circle in the middle. And then as it goes out, it gets more complex. So you have joy and then these green words are associated with joy. So like, um, enthusiastic, excited, hopeful, eager, triumphant, mm -hmm. blissful, and then surprise has confused, astonished, perplexed, disillusioned. <laughs> and so that goes on with sadness, anger, fear, and love. Mm -hmm. And so I love this because it um, helps to bump their vocabulary out to, um, instead of how was your day? Good, bad, you know, like <laughs> you can say I had a great day because my, friend brought in their pet iguana for show and tell and I was just astounded because it was so prickly and I didn't expect it to be like that you know that kind of thing so they can really explain what is on their mind so um so yeah this this is from an institute I guess now I'm looking at it for entrepreneurial leadership but so this <laughs> applies to adults too like they they would sit you know we could sit around and um, talk about our highs and lows from the week and use vocabulary that's really specific. Um, and I like that. That yeah. was really helpful. We do something similar, but I like the way you describe like the soft and fluffy and the itchy scratchy because yeah. we do at dinner time as a way of doing highs and lows, you know, word wise. I don't even remember where we got this. Some book a long time ago. We do sweet and sour. So <laughs> kind of a similar thing, but you know, we give each of the kids and they've added a few more over the years. So it's actually sweet sour service and silly so the sweet and sour are the obvious ones right and then the service one is a way that they have either served somebody or if they can't think of a way they've served somebody how somebody has served them and then silly is just something silly or funny that happened during the day and half the time it honestly it, it honestly happened moments before somebody yeah. goofed off the dinner table or something and said so, um, yeah, so you're basically explaining a different version. I like that, especially a little simpler for smaller children to understand. Like you said, soft and scratchy. Oh man, kids know that. So yeah. Yeah. tags, clothing, it's scratchy, it's itchy, you know, and so I like that. that that's really awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was going to be one of my examples. So I love that you all are already doing that at the dinner table. Um, dinner time is a great time because everyone's already focused on mm -hmm. one thing, eating, but then also conversation happens. And that's a really great way to be intentional about learning what your kids are thinking and what what's on their minds and on their hearts. And, um, and I love that you added the silly and, you know, I think it's so cool that it evolves into different things. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened with our social group too. We we're just made it really fun and and silly. And so another great time is car time when you're driving on the way to um, a practice or to school or a carpool. That's a great time to just go around. And, um, and if your kids are having trouble figuring it out, definitely set the model, um, like be a model yourself. So tell them, oh man, I'm feeling a little bit nervous right now to drive because the roads are icy. I'm hopeful that we can get there safely. And so, you know, you just, talking through your own emotions is really helpful for kids to know that it's okay to share what you're thinking and that it's normal and it's common. It's not something that, okay, it's time to sit down and talk about our emotions. You know, it's just an everyday conversation. Right, right. Well, and, and it's interesting too, like you were just mentioning, I, I have another example there with the, um, our youngest. So she just turned three in October. This is February while we're recording this. And so, you know, three and a half ish and for the longest time, and she's still barely on the cusp, but didn't quite understand what we were doing, but she knew everybody was taking turns sharing something, right? So what she would do is we'd get to sweet and she'd just say somebody's name. She'd look around the table and she'd say somebody's name and then we'd go to sour and she'd pick somebody else's <laughs> name. So, but it got to be really funny because everybody knew she wasn't fully grasping what was going on, but she was really trying and she really wanted to be a part of what was going on. 
But then, you, you know, you see like with my now five-year-old, he, he did a similar thing to start with, but then he started to be like, so what was sweet again? Or what was silly again? You know, he'd actually ask and then we could explain like, well, this is something good that happened to you today. Or this is something that made you feel really sad today or whatnot. But so yeah, so bearing with them, even if they're not getting it in the beginning, you know, just kind of like you said, continue to model because James and I share ours too. And so, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's something really hard. And, you know, we obviously, as far as, um, what's wise to share with our children but you know but but we share things that are hard for us too so like you said like they can see that and they can experience that from us as well right and that's exactly how we learn all other skills we start with the simple and then we keep layering on and adding complexity as we grow and learn and have life experiences and um just gain that age and wisdom so that's that's cool that you and your husband do it as well so that they're seeing that you know it's normal and it's another thing to do when you find that you're in a tense situation with a child and um, something's gone wrong and they are upset um, you can use that time to say hey um, remember when you did this that made me feel this and I wonder how we could both change what we're doing so that we both can feel loved or whatever emotion that you're wanting to feel so um, using those emotions at times where it tends to be stressful and you're in conflict or the siblings are in conflict with each other, um, supporting them to, to talk through things rather than, you know, scream, melt down, fight each other, pull each other's hair, <laughs> throw things at each other. <laughs> Which happens a lot in the midst of that. And that made yeah. so-and-so feel this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <I do that. laughs> yeah. And the goal obviously is to reach the point where you can talk things through and only use your words, but on the way there, there's going to be those um, tension and conflicts and things like that where you can kind of step in and say, hey, remember when you threw that shoe at your sister? <laughs> that probably made her feel shocked right. and hurt. <laughs> um, and then, you know, how are you feeling that made you want to throw that at her? Let's talk about it. And um, the time might not be like that very moment when it right after it happened you might give them some time to calm down and you know separate and then come back to it regroup <laughs> mentally and then and then talk about it but the goal you know is to interject those little bits so that the you know pushing and pulling each other's hair kind of lessens <laughs> as the years go on <laughs> lord willing right <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say about, this is kind of a little off script here, but just out of curiosity, what would you say is the biggest, um, what about being able to communicate these feelings um, helps the most as far as es uh, de-escalating the situation or, you know, just kind of bringing that stress level from here to here? What is it about um, just being able to verbalize or say that? Why do you, why do you feel like there's a big connection between there? Yeah, well, it's one thing. Um, there's some coping mechanisms that come into place where uh, if you know what you're feeling and you put a label to that emotion, then you can communicate it to someone else. You can say, hey, I'm feeling so overwhelmed right now. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling overstimulated and I don't have control of what I'm you know, about to do. So I need some space for five minutes and after that, I'll come back to you. So it's a way that we can um, tell people what we need. So just cope with emotions or, hey, I'm feeling really lonely and isolated. I need a hug, I think, you know, like just to be able to connect in a way that you can communicate what you need from other people efficiently, concisely, and without, um, when we can't express our emotions, we do it physically. So that's crying or, you know, laughing. Like we're obviously when something's funny, we're not going to just say, that's hilarious. <laughs> and not laugh. Like we laugh about things that are funny, but, but having labels for emotions makes it feel like it's a normal thing and not something that you have to hide or suppress, or, um, you have to, you're expected to be happy all the time at this level of happiness or something's wrong. Like you're able to, to stabilize your emotions by communicating what you need from other people. And, um, and then like encouraging your child to ask for what they need in that way. So I feel lonely. I, I need a friend, like, could I get together with my friend or something like that? If they're, you know, if they're experiencing those emotions. 
Sure. That's super helpful. Thank you. When I think, you know, obviously, and I think you would agree with this, but just hearing you say these things, I'm like, oh, adults could use this very well as well. <laughs> like Absolutely. You, you know, your wheel that you just showed is for an entrepreneurial leadership because I think yeah. adults in, you know, maybe sometimes some genders more than others as well really struggle or some personalities more than others, you know, really struggle to communicate what they're feeling. And so being able to do so brings you all on just a different page. Well, excuse yeah. me, a different page than you were, but brings you onto the same page so that you yeah. have a better understanding of like, oh, this person's not mad at me. They're just having a really hard time because maybe, you know, they're sad about something going on at home and I thought they were mad at me, you know? And so, right. <laughs> so we can apply all of these things in our marriages and our friendships and our job as well. <laughs> so true. Yeah. It's all about kind of self-awareness and realizing different emotions that come up. And it's even great to ask someone, hey, I noticed you're being a little bit more quiet than normal. You seem sad. Is that because you are, and then you can think of these words, is that because you're feeling lonely or like, are you experiencing grief or, you know, what, um, are you disappointed about something or are you suffering? Like, is there any way I can come alongside you and encourage you? So what we perceive as sad is a blanket statement, but it goes deeper than that. So maybe just voicing that and say, um, saying, you seem a little bit fearful. Like, are you nervous because something, because your project is due next week or something like that. So even asking people questions, you could say, I'm perceiving that you seem sad, but is that really what's going on? Or is it something more? Absolutely. Not assuming that we know, like, because, it, because this is how I would communicate this. Therefore, that's what they're feeling right now. So no, I think that's great. Very cool. Well, before we close, do you have any final statements on anything? Anything else you want to say about stress or children or relationships or? Um, I think, I guess the last thing would just be that um, all of this talking about emotions really encourages storytelling mm -hmm. and um, deepening the conversational like back and forth between people. And so that is something that is a really great skill, like a lifelong social skill to have. And so um, it's not just like an extra fluffy emotional thing to do, but it's really strengthening language and vocabulary for kids and for us. I mean, learning new vocabulary words is something that is a lifelong journey. And so um, telling your emotions often brings us into telling a story. And so that connects people, stories connect people's lives together. And so it's just something that's a great skill to start planting those seeds of in little toddlers and then middle school age kids, high school, college, you know, being able to share what's going on is something that we're always gonna be doing throughout our life. So this is a skill that's not just kind of a fluffy, nice to have type of thing, but it's really a foundational skill for a lot of different social areas in life. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. And thank you for just being with me today and having this conversation. I'm sure that my viewers will be very grateful. Um, again, if you'll missed in the beginning, if you want to learn more about Adrienne and her programs that she offers, you can go to learnwithadrian.com. I'll also put that in um, the description of this video so that you can just click on it in case you didn't catch that. But um, Adrienne's got lots. And when I say lots of videos, I mean, she's got lots of videos out there. She's got a lot of really good thought through material, especially for dealing with younger children. So thank you again, Adrienne, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we'll chat again. Bye. Bye-bye.